Hey everyone, it's Jason, and do you feel the cruise experience has changed for you, especially since the pandemic? Many people feel this way. They feel it's less valuable. Well, these are five things that we're going to implement in 2024 and beyond to get more out of our cruise experience and hopefully save some money so we can cruise more often. And if you like to plan, make sure to stick around to number five. So number one would be the dining and cabin experience. So we always used to get multiple nights of the specialty dining. And what we found was it kind of locked us in to what time we had to eat every single night. Now, that's not a bad thing, but you always have to plan your day around that. I'm going to be eating here at 5.30. And that's just not enjoyable. So what we've said is, is looking at things like the Aqua Spa, which gives you the blue. You can go at any time and have an elevated experience. Now, I'm one that thinks the blue is like a specialty restaurant, but you have it every single night. Then, now Princess has the Reserve Collection Mini Suites. And they've had them before, but now they have a special dining room on their new Sun and Star Princesses. So we're excited about trying that on the Sun Princess. So here's the interesting thing is, when you start looking at the money, you're better off upgrading to these cabins than spending hundreds of dollars for those dining experiences. The other thing is, specialty dining has skyrocketed. For example, about a year ago, I'm watching a video and someone said that Eden was $50 per person. Well, we're going in June on the Beyond and it's $80 a person. It's $30 more per person plus gratuities. I mean, you might be looking at $75 extra dollars just for one night. So that's something that we're moving away from because it's not as much of a savings and I feel it locks you down. I feel it doesn't allow you to just enjoy your experience. Now, one thing I will say is, is it's nice to maybe pick one night and say, hey, this is going to be our special night. We're going to enjoy it. So there is the supper club on the icon of the seas. Yes, it's extremely expensive, but that could be a very special experience. Or dinner on the edge on celebrity cruises. It's not always available, and apparently it's one night on a cruise, and it's only 40 people. We actually booked it for our upcoming cruise just that one time. Those might be more special and memorable experiences than just eating every single night at a specialty restaurant, and it's a lot of food every night. So that's something that we're changing in 2024 and beyond. So number two, and this is something that's rapidly changing in the state of Florida, is traveling to the ports. And this is really because of Brightline. Brightline is a rail service to many of the major cities in Florida. And in the next couple of years, that's going to extend to Tampa. They're also going to be opening a station right outside of Orlando in Port Canaveral. It's going to give you the option to fly in to a lot of different places, even if you're not from Florida, and enjoy, let's say, Orlando for three or four days, then go down and check out a cruise out of Miami. It allows you to do that without the stress of trying to get a rent a car, dropping it off, or flying to another port. It's a game changer. It's extremely comfortable, extremely easy. You don't have to show up like two, two and a half hours before. You show up 30 to 45 minutes at most before, and it's no big deal. You get on the train, you have your assigned seat, and you're good to go. We love this option. Now, I always tell people, hey, you need to fly in the day before your cruise, but I never tell them you need to get there before your day of your cruise before if you're in the state of Florida. And I have found that makes it a much more enjoyable experience. We went down for the Celebrity Ascent. We got down there a day early. We were able to see on Saturday all the ships leaving port. Really cool to see them all leave. And then Sunday morning, totally took it easy, got in an Uber, and we're at the port in 10 minutes. So this can make your cruising experience much more enjoyable. It gives you options and something that we are gonna consider doing a lot more. The other thing too is Port Canaveral is exploding. If you haven't heard, they're opening a fourth terminal there. It's gonna give them different options. They said it's not gonna be associated with any cruise line because they're gonna have multiple cruise lines going out of there. So 
moving forward, we see the Celebrity Apex going out of there, the Sky Princess, MSC is going to have new ships out of there, and NCL is going to home port the NCL Agua out of there. A lot more experiences. So you can fly into Florida, into Orlando, and just take a quick trip over there. I think that's a really great option, and I'm really excited, especially for us. We're only 45 minutes away because we're in East Orlando. It makes for an enjoyable experience, and I love to see the expansion of Port Canaveral. So number three, getting outside your comfort zone and trying new cruise lines. So I'm all for being loyal to Royal, and I really enjoy Celebrity Cruise Lines. But what we have found is when you look at the Celebrity Aqua Spa cabins on the Edge class, especially the new Ascent and beyond, it's the same price as the World America Yacht Club on MSC. And this is a full suite versus an Aqua Spa experience. It's a ship within a ship experience. And if you can do an inside cabin, they have inside yacht club cabins that are cheaper than balcony cabins on many of these cruise lines. Next year in 2025, we're trying NCL, going back after many years to Holland America, and trying MSC. All these cruises are cheaper than Royal and Celebrity and Princess, and they're on two brand new ships. So your experience may be more elevated trying these new cruise ships. It's worth a try to try something different, save some money, and you may fall in love with this experience and say this is much better. And the other thing that's really nice is on, for example, MSC, they do match status level when you're on like diamond and above. So we're at that status level and they matched us. Really enjoyable that we can do that and it's worth a try to see if you can get a more elevated experience moving forward on different cruise lines. So number four, understanding your perks. And it's unfortunate many people just don't understand all the perks they get. So for example, let's say you're a couple cruises away from diamond status on Royal Caribbean. Is it worth it taking a couple older ships, maybe the prices are lower, to get to diamond status so you no longer have to buy the beverage package because you do get four drinks per person per day? Will that save you money moving forward? And then there's discounts on top of that. You get spa discounts. So if you're getting spa treatments anyway, understand you may get 20, 30% off in some of these spa treatments when you're at these certain levels of status. Understand those perks. And for example, if you're diamond on royal, you're elite on celebrity and vice versa. There's reciprocity there. I can't believe I've talked to a lot of people and they just didn't know that. They didn't really dive deep into their loyalty perks. Understand that. That can save you money moving forward and it can help you make decisions on who do you want to book with moving forward in the future. So before I get to number five, I would ask that you please like this video as it does help the channel grow. Also, consider subscribing as we're on the path to 100,000 subscribers and we want to hit it before we go on our Alaskan cruise at the end of August. If you could help me with that, I would greatly appreciate it. So number five, not planning every minute of every day. And this is fresh on my mind because we're going on a Royal Caribbean Oasis class ship next week. And I can't tell you how much planning I had to do. When do I want to eat? Do we want to go to this specialty restaurant and that specialty restaurant? When are my reservations? And then their reservation system was messed up. It was, you know, taking four hours for this reservation so I couldn't book a show and on and on and on. I just want to go on a cruise. Maybe book one specialty restaurant. Have my main dining room, even on Royal Caribbean, says while reservations are not required, they're highly suggested. I don't know if I want to be eating at 6.45 on a Tuesday. Maybe I'll be hungry an hour before or an hour after. I think that's one thing that you have to look at and understand about yourself. Is that way you want to cruise? Now, there's certain people that absolutely love that. And I skew towards that because that's what I enjoy doing is planning and planning and planning. But what I realized is we were on a celebrity ship before this one coming up. And I planned nothing, hardly at all. One specialty dining. It was no pre-planning. We had an amazing cruise. 
We were in the blue and it was just an enjoyable experience. Is that going to help you to have a more enjoyable experience, not planning everything every single day, every single minute? Now, I'm not saying you don't want to go on Royal Caribbean and these Oasis class ships because I absolutely love them. Just understand they're a little more work to pre-plan everything. What do you guys think about these five things that we're going to change in cruising in 2024 and beyond? Is there something that you're doing to get more out of your cruising experience post-pandemic? Let me know in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for the support. And until I talk to you next week, happy cruising.